Today, the man convicted of killing a retired University of Michigan professor learned his sentence in court. But it's what 29-year-old Isom Hamilton did right before he was sentenced that's noteworthy. Jason Colthorpe was in the courtroom and joins us now with that part of the story, Jason. Yeah, right before and right after, guys. Uh, one of the detectives on this case told me today, Hamilton has shown no remorse for the murder. In fact, the only emotion he has seen from him was anger, and that didn't change today. With a heavy police presence, Isom Hamilton entered a Washtenaw County courtroom defiant from the start. I didn't receive any packet of paper or anything. Wearing prescription sunglasses, Hamilton scoffed at the facts of the case that he targeted, stalked, and then bludgeoned 76-year-old Robert Sharp to death in his home during a robbery last June. Hamilton set the body and house on fire to cover the crime. Uh, and even though I'm exploding on the inside, I am going to try to be as calm and measured as I can. Sharp's son, David, talked about how devastating it's been for his family. Whether he felt any remorse at all for my, uh, for my father's murder, I wondered if he was haunted by the horror in my father's eyes as he lay dying, bleeding profusely from numerous stab wounds, if he hurt even a little from the memories of dragging my father's lifeless body down into our basement and setting it on fire. Just before being sentenced to mandatory life in prison without parole, Hamilton maintained his innocence. To the family, I'm sorry for their loss. I'm sorry for your loss. But I didn't do none of this. All I did, all I'm guilty of is pop, uh, possession of stolen property. And afterward, as Sharp was hugging Hamilton's mother, Hamilton shouted expletives after being led away. That actually happened a couple of times as he was being led away. Outside court afterward, David Sharp told us he was not swayed by Hamilton's denials. He said he saw all the evidence in court and said, you might be able to explain away one or two coincidences, but not a hundred. Yeah. Quite a moment to see the victim's family yeah. connecting with the, <laughs> they did the defendant's that again. family. Outside again, too. And he said in his victim statement, uh, just he prayed for their family as well because they're losing someone. Sure. They clearly made a connection there through sure. this case. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jason. All right, Jason.